Welcome to Wesley Church in Reading today. We have a call to worship, and later on, Stephen Appiah will be showing what that call means for us. Now some words from Psalm 135. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise him, you servants of the Lord, you who minister in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God. Since the people of God have assembled in the presence of God, His Spirit is pouring into our house, His Spirit is opening our hearts to offer our worship to God as we lift our voices to praise Him, to glorify Him. Father, we have come into your presence because you deserve that glory, you deserve that adoration, you deserve that praise, you deserve the exaltation. Day by day, week by week, you sustain each one of us. You know us by name, Lord. 
you empower as you you bless as you sustain as you you reveal to us your power in our lives and every day we depend on you we depend on you on our sustenance we depend on you on our life in you we live we move and we have our being and so you deserve the glory we know angels glorify you every day but we want to lift our voices and join them and join the churches around the world to praise to glorify to adore you you sent your son jesus to come and die for us we did not deserve it you are only beloved son you made him die in our place so that we can have hope in our lives eternal life for us in your kingdom what else can we say in return for this for this offer father we thank you our lord jesus we glorify you we lift your name on high we praise you we honor you for everything that you have done for us sinners to bring us into your father's kingdom and make god our father and make us part of your kingdom we are grateful eternally in the presence of your holy spirit who has filled us in this church adult and children the way your holy spirit has sustained as lord we we are eternally grateful but we want to remind ourselves that we are flesh you created us in flesh and flesh is our weakness and so we fall short we sin we are unable to show the love that you expect us to to the people you expect us to be lord we are sorry and we come into your presence to acknowledge our sins and we ask that in the precious name of christ jesus forgive us and you have said if we confess our sins we are already forgiven because you are a faithful father lord open our hearts this morning rise above this worship and make it acceptable to you through christ jesus name we pray and with thanksgiving amen When it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple courts, he found men selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and others sitting at tables exchanging money. So he made a whip out of cords and drove all from the temple area, both sheep and cattle. He scattered the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. To those who sold doves, he said, get these out of here. How dare you turn my father's house into a market? His disciples remembered that it is written, zeal for your house will consume me. Then the Jews demanded of him, what miraculous sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. The Jews replied, it has taken 46 years to build this temple and you are going to raise it in three days. But the temple he had spoken of was his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples recalled what he had said. Then they believed the scripture and the words that Jesus had spoken. Now, while he was in Jerusalem at the Passover feast, many people saw the miraculous signs he was doing 
and believed in his name. But Jesus would not entrust himself to them, for he knew all men. When the music fades, all is stripped away, and I simply can't. Longing just to bring something that's a word that will bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song. For a song in itself is not what you have required You search much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship And it's all about you it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. King of Endless no one could express how much you deserve Though I'm weak and poor, all I have is yours Every single breath I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself is not what you have required You search much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship And it's all about you it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. From the first page of the Bible, we encounter worship. And in the early pages of the Bible, worship didn't involve a temple. You only needed to put three stones together and then offer your um, sacrifice on it and pray and, and God will be there. And, and when I looked through the type of worship during that time, it was almost like God's presence depended on the sincerity of the person offering the worship. So we know the story of Cain and Abel, and, and, and Abel was sincere in his worship, and God accepted that. And, through, and, and it's remained consistent throughout the Bible. When worship is not sincere to God, he would despise it. There were times he's told Israel, your sacrifice is stinking in my nose. Get it out of here. I don't like it. So it's not simply um, offering a sacrifice. That, that's, not the, that's, not, that's not the point. It's about how genuine, how sincere, how you want to revere, 
how you want to honor him, how you want to glorify him. It's about your relationship with him that constitutes worship for God. And so the worship progressed and, and you got people like Abraham and Jacob and the prophets using stones to build an altar and worship and worship God there. Then came worship in the temple. Worship in the temple was quite interesting because the temple, even though was built by human hand, the design was by God. So God showed Moses how the temple should be shaped. God gave inspiration to the finest craftsmen and craftswomen and artisans to design and build the temple to specification made by God himself. And he was involved in, in the, the way the altar should be, should be designed and where it should be placed. So he gave the inspiration of the shape of the altar, its contents and everything. He gave inspiration for the liturgy. So the priest could not just come in and read his own, his own prayers. God had prepared liturgy, psalms that they should sing. Even the dress worn by the priest was designed by God for beauty and glory. And so in his temple, he will have the altar there. The high priest, like David, will stand here. On his right will be the other priest. On the left will be the other priest. And they will face the assembly. And there will be quietness. And then the harp will start playing. And the congregation will rise and join in and offer their praise. And so everything in the temple was focused on the assembly, knowing that they were in the presence of God. The worship has never been a place where you come to meet your friends. It has always been coming into the presence of the God you know. There is more. So at the heart of worship, these were important. His altar was always central because at the altar, the Holy Spirit would, would, would overshadow that. And then the heart of the worshipers, and I think some weeks back when I was preaching here on the book of Isaiah, I did mention how God rejected them because they refused to worship. And, and, and another important story is, is what happened in Shiloh, a place called Shiloh, where the, the high priest was Eli, uh, the, the high priest that the little boy Daniel went, uh, somewhere went to stay with. And Eli's children, two boys, or uh, two men, were, had become priests. And this priest, disregarded and disrespected worship. At the time of offering and sacrifice, and when the sacrifice was being burned on the altar, Phinehas, one of the priests, and his brother would take fork and knife and go to the altar and cut some of the meat and eat it. How dare you approach the altar of God where sacrifice is being offered to the mighty God, and you go in, cut some of the meat and stand there and eat it and laugh, and God sent the message to Samuel, I'm going to teach this family something they will never forget. And at a, at a war at Shiloh, the ark of God was taken away by the Philistines. The two 
uh, priest, they died that day. They were killed that day. Eli himself died that day. The, 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 the wife, one of the wives of the, of the priest was pregnant and sadly she, she gave birth that day and, and she gave the boy's name something like the glory of God has left Israel. Why? Because of worship. The quality of worship depends on the sincerity, our sincerity to God and how we want to adore him. In the New Testament, John introduces us to worship, but he does it in a very clever way. He first gave us the, 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 the miracle of turning water into wine, and that's John chapter 2. Then after that, John talks about the cleansing of the temple. And that's John chapter 2. Then John chapter 3, John talks about Jesus meet, meeting Nicodemus and talking about how you can enter the kingdom of God and how the Son of Man will be lifted high on the cross and any man who, any person who looks at the cross will be saved. And John chapter 4 Jesus meets the Samaritan woman who also raises important questions about worship. So let's have a look at this. When Jesus turned water into wine, there was one simple um, statement. We've drunk the old wine, but this new wine is better. What does that mean? And I want you to hold that in your mind. The new wine is better than the old. If you are into your wines, not many of us are, but yes, some of us are, you will know that old wine tastes better than new. Here, new wine, they said, was far better than the old. What does that mean? Samaritan woman meets Jesus, and after a long conversation, he tackled Jesus. You Jewish people say we cannot worship in our temple here in Samaria. Why? You have a temple in Jerusalem. We have a temple in Samaria. Why can't we conduct worship to God in our temple? And why should Jerusalem be the only place where we can worship God? Where we can assemble and worship God? And, and, and this was Jesus' answer. You cannot worship in your temple here. Because it's not a good temple. The things you've got in that temple, you don't even know. So you can't worship in there. Your worship in that temple will not be accepted by God. That's interesting. If they've got sincere heart, why can't they worship there? But the temple had been built and filled with idols. So Jesus said, your worship there will not be accepted. But to your second question... A time is coming when people everywhere, people everywhere in Redding, in Wesley, in Basingstoke, in, 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 in Africa, in India, people everywhere will be able to worship. That time is coming. A time is coming when Jerusalem will not be the only place where you can worship. You'll be able to worship in Europe, in Africa, in Asia, everywhere. And when you worship, you'll be able to worship in the spirit. Ah, that's interesting. Let's go to the cleansing of the temple. A lot of preachers, when they preach on Jesus cracking the whip, they will say Jesus' action was extreme and it was harsh. I beg to differ. I beg to differ. Let's look at this. The original um, place where 
you could buy sheep and take it to the temple and sacrifice was never in the temple. It was in a place called Kidron Valley near the Mount Olive. That's where we're at Passover, when people from outside come to Jerusalem, of course, it's not, it's not practical to bring a sheep all the way from Galilee. So you come to Jerusalem, you go to Kidron Valley, buy your sheep there, take it to the, uh, to the temple, and offer it as a sacrifice. But the priest found an idea. If we go and select the sheep, and bring them into the temple and bless them, we can charge more. See? So soon, nobody went to the Kidron Valley. Everybody came into the temple, easy. Buy your sheep, hand it to them, they slaughter it. And it eventually evolved into a big market, right in the middle of the temple. The temple of God. What, 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 what about the money changes? They decided that the Roman coin was impure. And so they, they created a temple, oh, temple coin or temple money. And that means that if you came from Egypt or from any other part or, or even if you live in, in Israel, you have to exchange your normal money for temple money. And the exchange rate, who determines it? That's where the catch is. It was becoming more profitable to use the temple to make money than to use it for worship. And if you imagine our Lord Jesus Christ come all the way from Galilee. He wants a place to worship. And in the temple, it's all commotion. It's all market. It's all buying and selling and people changing money. There was no place for him to worship. Worship is important. But he had to take the action that he did What was meant to be the service for people to offer their sacrifice had been turned into exploitation. But there is more. We are given three statements. The first statement was, and the zeal for, your, for my father's house has consumed me. Jesus pulled this, the, the disciples pulled this statement from the, from the Psalms. I think it's Psalm 51. And it's, it's, it's a statement David made because when David brought the Ark of the Covenant into the temple, every morning he would go and check if it's there. He will worship and praise. And if you're looking for David, King David, and you couldn't find him, go into the temple, he is there. And the worship of God consumed him. It filled his life. It was his first priority to get up in the morning, go to the temple, and worship. And, and I pray that we be, our lives will be consumed by worship. And, and, and so that statement was taken, the worship, the zeal to be in my father's house has consumed my whole life. But then there is more. Jesus said, you have made my father's house a den of robbers, a marketplace where you're cheating, you're exploiting, you are not worshiping, you're just making money for the priesthood. Where did that statement come from? Jeremiah 11. This is what it says. In Jeremiah 11, Jesus' statement comes from here. You have made, has this house which bears my name become a den of robbers in your sight? This house where you worship me, has it become a place where you rob people? Yes, I too have seen it, declares the Lord. But go now to the place called Shiloh. 
where I first made my dwelling. That's the time where Daniel, Samuel was with Eli. And see what I did to them when they abused my worship. And so Jesus was saying to them, what you are doing in this temple will bring disaster on the nation. And if you compare the way the Romans brought the temple down and they they tore it down into pieces and left one wall there in Israel. And when I went to Israel, I stood there and I prayed on, on, on just a wall. The temple was, was torn down. And a lot of people in Israel were killed by the Romans. If you compare that with Jesus cracking the whip, no preacher will be able to stand and say Jesus' action was extreme. Because he was avoiding disaster on the nation. But there is more. Bring this temple down. So they challenge him. The, the high priest says, we can, we, can, we can operate this market here. What power do you have to stop us from, from operating this market? And of course, you go in today, you crack the whip, you turn the money changers, you spill the coins, you turn your back, they, turn, they look and see, oh, he's gone. Put the tables up again. Let's start, let's start uh, the market. And they start the market again. And he said, bring this temple down. I'll replace it in three days with my body. He was referring to his body. And this is amazing. The body of Christ. The body of Christ as a temple is a place where you can worship in spirit and in truth as he told the Samaritan woman, is a, is a temple that you can mount everywhere. You remember the statement, where two or three are met in my name, I'll be there, my temple will be there. So if you meet with your friend and your colleague and you say, let us pray, you are praying in the temple of the body of Christ. So anywhere, everywhere, you can set up the temple of Christ and worship God in the temple. This is not a temple built by hand. This is a temple that the sacrifice has already been made. Once and for all, it's been accepted by God because the sacrifice of his own son. This temple is not made by hand. This temple is acceptable. This temple cleanses us of our sins. This temple brings the Holy Spirit into our presence. Oh, and this they said, the new wine is better than the old. Because this new temple is superior to the glamorous temple they had in Jerusalem. This temple is invisible. It, you can, you can, it's invisible and yet you can perceive and see it here at Wesley. This is the temple of the body of Christ. And we are all gathered in the body of Christ. And wherever you go in the world and you walk into a church or, or you meet somebody, you are worshiping in the body of Christ. It has all the ingredients of a temple. It's not built by hand. It's, it's the sacrifice is already accepted by God. This new temple is better than the old. The Holy Spirit is evident. His presence is evidence, evident in this, in this new temple. And the assembly, the congregation in the temple of the body of Christ, that was the conversation with, with Nicodemus. They'll be born again. They'll be redeemed. The, the, the worshipers will come cleansed in my blood they will be pure before God the worshipers will be will, they, they, their worship will, be, will rise before God and will be acceptable in his sight in the body of Christ it provides us a place to glorify God a place to also bring our petition to God and we are able to meet God. 
when we come into his presence. And so coming to church here at Wesley is not a social event. God demands worship. He demands it. And so we should all be consumed by worship. Should be able to have no excuse at all but come into his presence to worship him, to renew your spiritual strength, to renew your inner peace, to receive God's blessings and his favor, all in the presence of God during worship. I've been redeemed, I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, by the blood of the Lamb. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, saved from sin I know I am. All my sins are taken away. Praise the Lord. Now Jesus and me, now Jesus and me, we do agree. We do agree. Now Jesus and me, we do agree. Now Jesus and me, we do agree. I love him and he loves me. All my sins are taken away, praise the Lord. Now the devil and me, now the devil and me, we disagree. We disagree, now the devil and me, we disagree. Now the devil and me, we disagree. I hate him and he hates me. All my sins are taken away. Praise the Lord. You can talk about me. You can talk about me. Just as you please. Just as you please. You can talk about me. Just as you please. You can talk about me just as you please. I'll talk about you down on my knees. All my sins are taken away. Praise the Lord. My old company, my old company, I fare you well. I fare you well, my old companion. I fare you. taken away. Praise the Lord. I've been redeemed, I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, by the blood of the Lamb. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Saved from sin, I know I am. All my sins are taken away. Praise the Lord. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, throughout all of human history, your desire to abide with us and to create places of meeting has never wavered. Therefore, with hope and with confidence, we bring our prayers before you. We ask that we may be so rooted and grafted in you, that we bear fruit to your glory. Nourish and tend your church, that we may be strong and fit to serve this present age. Amen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. 
sustain you, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord lift his countenance towards you. The Lord's peace fill you and be with you now and forever. Amen. Shall we share the grace together? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all and evermore. Amen.